so dear students welcome to embryology classes so embryology is uh, deals with the prenatal stages of development where uh, development of the baby in the mother's womb so it is called as embryology and we study embryology in two sections that is general embryology and systemic embryology so before going uh, to general embryology uh, today's session is on introduction to the embryology where we will learn some basics in embryology before going directly into embryology topics so embryology deals with the prenatal changes of development that is changes in the mother's womb from the fertilization of ovum so it is nothing but from fertilization of ovum so after fertilization what happens zygote forms so from the development of ovum uh, to zygote will birth to birth of a newborn so this is embryology so we can divide a uh, prenatal period that is the development of baby inside the mother's womb is called prenatal once the newborn comes out then we considered as postnatal period so prenatal period is further divided into three parts pre embryonic period embryonic period and fetal stage so we can divide to three parts pre embryonic period embryonic period and fetal stage so pre embryonic period it extends from the fertilization to the end of second week of uh, intrauterine life so from fertilization so this is so from fertilization till second week of gestation so that is pre embryonic period so pre embryonic period we see the development of conceptus next uh, going on with the uh, embryonic period embryonic period is from the third week that is from the third week till the end of eighth week of intrauterine life eighth week of intrauterine life so we see uh, important change during third week where we see the development of germ layers that is called ectoderm endoderm mesoderm so that is called as gastrulation so from the grass gastrulation week we see the development of all structures up till the eighth week of intrauterine life is embryonic period so here the conceptus develops into embryo so later fetal stage fetal stage extends from it extends from the beginning of ninth week so till birth so that is fetal period so pre embryonic period includes fertilization fertilization means conception where the ovum is fertilized by the sperm and uh, the fertilized uh, product is the zygote so that zygote undergoes cleavage the second thing is the cleavage which is included in pre embryonic period cleavage is the initiation of cell division then implantation so the divided cells so they they form a group of cells and further divides to form a blastocyst at the end of cleavage where this blastocyst will get implanted inside the wall of the uterus within the endometrium of the uterus that is called as implantation and after implantation we see further this blastocyst starts developing into germ layers so till it forms the germ layers in the beginning of that it is called as pre embryonic period in embryonic period we see the development of placenta so we see the formation of placenta development of umbilical cord extra embryonic membranes uh, and that is derived from extra embryonic mesoderm chorion all these things amnion and then differentiation of germ layers into specific body organs 
so organs development we see during embryonic period that is last from the third week to eighth week of intrauterine life then fetal period fetal stage includes uh, growth of specialization of body structures means the structures will grow uh, properly and the growth of the baby and in increasing the weight of the developing embryo is the fetal so here we call the embryo grows into fetus so here we see the fetus development of fetus embryo during embryonic stage conceptus during the pre embryonic stage so before learning into these stages uh, the basics of uh, embryology is about cell division so we should know how cell divides uh, cell division is a process by which a parent cell divides uh, in which the parent cell divides into two or more daughter cells so that is the cell division so the cell is having a cycle the cyclical changes which are happening in the cell before and after division is called as cell cycle so cell cycle is an ordered sequence of events that occur in a cell and in the preparation of cell of the cell division and to produce two daughter cells from each cell so the total cell cycle time uh, for a typically rapidly dividing human cell is 24 hours that is the most uh, normal time that is in a uh, young small baby where we see the cells are rapidly dividing and growing there the cell cycle is for 24 hours and at most minimum uh, the time may be up is 12 hours so this is the minimal time of a cell cycle so the cell cycle you can divide into four phases so the phases are g1 phase then g2 phase these are called gap phases then s phase which is a synthesis dna synthesis phase and the mitosis phase the last so this is called m phase or cell division phase or mitosis phase g1 g2 are the gap phases g1 g2 and s phase they are considered as interphase so g1 plus g2 plus s phase are considered as interphase so you can see here the cell during interphase and here is the cell during cell division at the time of cell division just before the cell division so human cell is a eukaryotic cell where the chromosomes are present in a nucleus and it is covered by a nuclear membrane so when a cell is having a nucleus with a nuclear membrane it is called as eukaryotic cell and chromosomes are present within the nucleus and the time taken for s g2 and m phase that is uh, mitosis phase are almost uh, same in all the cell types so s phase usually last for that is the synthesis phase usually last for 6 to 8 hours and g2 phase for 4 1 to 4 hours m phase is that is the cell division phase is 1 to 2 hours so this time is constant in most of the cells whereas the g1 phase that is the resting phase of the cell so in resting phase the g1 phase it can be beyond 100 hours or more we don't know in a rapidly dividing cell the g1 phase can be less than 2 hours and if the cell is in a resting phase which not doesn't divide immediately so it can be in that same stage for 100 hours or more 
so for example if you see in the ovaries there are cells called as primary oocytes which you will learn during oogenesis about this primary oocytes so these primary oocytes remain in diplotin stage of meiosis so that is one stage during meiosis called as diplotin so the cells are arrested in the diplotin stage of meiosis from fifth month of gestation means from the fifth month of intrauterine life until the period before the ovulation means till the woman attains the uh, menarch so until the ovulation begins they are in the same stage and after ovulation the sec, uh, the primary oocyte will complete this meiosis and enter into the further phases to form a daughter cells which are up to 50 years of uh, age so that is a specific thing about the g1 phase so here during interphase we can see the chromosomes are highly coiled and uh, just at the time of cell division we can see the chromosomes are aligned properly and they are condensed so there are two basic types of cell division one is mitosis and meiosis so we are going to see the mitosis now so mitosis having stages like prophase metaphase where you can see the chromosomes are condensed and aligned properly then anaphase in anaphase the chromosomes are at a equatorial plate connected to the uh, spindles to the centrioles to the spindles and uh, then telophase where the daughter chromosomes get separated then the nuclei two nuclei are formed and we see the division of cytoplasm called as cytokinesis forming finally two daughter cells so if you see in mitosis the number of chromosomes which are present in the parent cell the daughter cells also contain the same number of chromosomes so here if it is diploid that is 46 for example if it is a female cell 46 xx and the daughter cell both the cells will have 46 xx 46 xx so there won't be any crossover between the chromosomes during mitosis so we can have a glance over meiosis also meiosis is a reductional division where uh, it completes in two sequences that is meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 which are the successive divisions meiosis 2 is as same as mitosis but meiosis 1 is the where reduction of the chromosomes happens so here if you see the daughter cells the daughter cells are not identical as a parent cell because the parent cell it is a diploid number 46 xx so the daughter cells will have 23 23x so at the end of mitosis the daughter cell will have haploid number of chromosomes means half the number of chromosomes so meiosis the stages are same as mitosis prophase prophase is further divided then metaphase anaphase telophase cytokinesis having two daughter cells and this is the second meiosis so till here it is meiosis 1 okay so prophase we can see it is quite prolonged because it is further divided into leptotene zygotene pachytene this is leptotene this is zygotene here is the pachytene and one more phase called diakinesis so these are the different stages of prophase and meiosis is having meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 which are in sequence let's see some differences between mitosis and meiosis 
mitosis happens in the somatic cells means elsewhere everywhere in the body meiosis happens only in the germ cells so germ cells are present in the gonads that is in testis in the males and ovaries in females where uh, they differentiate by meiosis to form sperms in males whereas ova in females so mitosis there is no crossing over of the chromatids so we won't see any crossing over if chromatids the in mitosis whereas in meiosis the crossing over of chromatids takes place so we see the crossing over of chromatids takes place in meiosis and the daughter cells have same number of chromosomes as parent in mitosis whereas in meiosis if we see the daughter uh, cells have half the number of chromosomes as parent so we see here 46 xx is reduced to 23x so half the number of chromosomes as parent so mitosis is an equational division uh, where the same number of chromosomes are present as parent cell whereas the meiosis is a reductional division where the chromosomes number reduce and in mitosis it completes in one sequence whereas in meiosis completes in two sequences that is there are two successive divisions meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 crossover crossover is a characteristic event it is a critical event in meiosis where the chromatid uh, segments interchange between the paired homologous chromosomes so you can see the chromatid uh, segments they cross over so this crossover is like x like it is like letter x which is called as chiasma so once the paired chromosomes start uh, separating the points of interchange are temporarily united to form a x like structure called as chiasma so as a result there will be exchange of genetic material so as a result of meiotic division the genetic uh, material variably it is enhanced to through uh, crossover which which uh, redistributes the genetic material and there will be a random distribution of homologous chromosomes to the daughter cells as a result of meiotic division each germ cell contains a haploid number of chromosomes so as a result each germ cell contains haploid number of chromosomes and so that at the end of fertilization the diploid number is restored back so the two cells the of uh, germ cells sperm spermatocyte promato site of male plus ovum of female that is oocyte plus oocyte so here they have diploid 23 x or y any one thing this is 23 x so the after fertilization it re restores the chromosomal number to 46 maybe xx or 46 xy so the diploid number of chromosomes is restored after fertilization that is the end of meiosis 2 so this completes uh, the cell division and uh, cell cycle and we have learnt about the basic things in embryology and further we would discuss with the uh, gametogenesis and then first week of development where it includes uh, fertilization and implantation and further we proceed to the second and third week in general embryology thank you